Yo, greetings, you know, bless up Music Coast. It's a joy to be here. My name is Michael Leslie. I hail from the Pacific Northwest. And uh, yeah, we are here at the Oregon Reggae Fest, the second annual one, you know, so it's a, it's a joy to see the people come together in the name of Positive Roots Reggae Music. You know, big up yourself, Music Coast, every time. Oh. So you've been a huge part of various bands, including Rising Buffalo Tribe. And as a keyboardist and a singer, how has that collective experience influenced your current solo project? It's been incredible. You know, I feel extremely blessed, to say the least, to work with a myriad of great singers and players of instruments. And uh, it's just a 100% honor, you know? So I'm just grateful, you know, every time. And transitioning from a band setting to a solo endeavor, that could be quite different. What prompted this? Well, it's actually funny. Before I really dove deep into the, the keyboard role, I actually started my music career and journey as a singer-songwriter. You know, my music journey began with just a guitar and myself and some songs that I wrote and the inspiration from creation, you know? So I played two or three shows back in 2016 with uh, my first band that I ever put together. And uh, it was a great vibes, you know? But the vibes, you know, it, uh, the cats who I was playing with, they weren't really into reggae music like I was, and they didn't have as much joy and fulfillment through roots reggae music. So I decided to shelf that project and I was at a crossroads. I was like, well, I could find a new group of musicians and forwards the journey again, or at the same time, I could, I could learn how to play keyboards because I see all these reggae bands that, that weren't having a keyboard player at the time. So I was like, maybe playing keyboards could put me in a position where I could learn from ones and ones. And as I grow and gather my own life experience, I can kind of like bring it forward. So to now be at a place seven years later to where now it's like I've, I've been rocking with great musicians from different areas of Portland and Southern Oregon and Eugene and throughout the Pacific Northwest. And it's just a joy because now I'm just, I'm so grateful and excited to sing these songs to the people, you know? It's a, it's a deep, a deep healing, you know? A healing of the soul. So I love it. The transition has, has felt natural. Yeah. Can you share any insights to your creative process when it comes to songwriting or composing your music? Yeah, so it all starts in the heart, you know, it all starts in the soul. And uh, it's like throughout the day or throughout life, certain things will happen that, you know, you go through certain experiences and there's the highs and the lows and everything in between. And, you know, certain, certain experiences will just put me in a state where I'm like, yo, I just need to put this into a song because just to, to help process it and, you know, forwards and evolve into the next version of myself, you know? So it could start with certain things I've been through. You know, one of the main things that I like to put into my original music is just my love for creation and the inspiration that I receive from living, living on this earth, you know? Then with my music, I hope to hold up a mirror and in that mirror, it can reveal to you deeper parts of yourself, you know? that are still yet to be discovered or that you already, you've already been rocking with, you know? So music is such a powerful tool. And, you know, I could hear a melody or a certain chord progression because I play guitar and keyboards as well. So I, I, um, if I have a nice chord progression that emits a certain kind of emotion within me, then I'll try to have that be the theme of the song. And then I'll craft the lyrics around that, you know? And try to try to tie it all together, you know. So, okay. inspiration comes in many different shapes and forms, and many random times. Sometimes it'll come at like three, four in the morning when I'm trying to go to sleep, and I'm like, I, I can't go to sleep right now. Yeah, you know? too, too, too much, much stuff going on. Yeah, I love that, man. Sure. And as someone with a rich background in reggae, how do you approach infusing your music with the genre, distinctive to vibes, while still maintaining your unique style? Yeah, you know. That's a, that's a great question. You know, I think, you know, it reminds me of that song by Israel Vibrations where they say, you know, we're all singing the same song, you know, in the sense of 
what I've learned through reggae music and through Rastafari is, you know, a deep understanding of the interconnected oneness of all life in the universe. So, you know, there's that. The inspiration for reggae, you know, and the foundation of that, I try to, I try to not stray too far from that, you know, with the drums and the bass and the rhythm section, but how to keep my, my own style. I just like to sing, you know, I grew up in the choir and um, I've sang in a lot of different settings and, you know, I just, the uh, job place to song in my heart, you know, so I just, I try to do my best and, you know, at the end of the day, I try not to get too caught up on, you know, what, what anybody else is doing or what other people are thinking. I just, you know, just inspired, inspired. So, yeah, I've been blessed to work with a lot of great, inspirational, you know, high-ranking artists. And, uh, you know, I, that's what I learned from them, you know, is just be yourself. Just be yourself. So I just try my best to be myself. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I and you talked about, you know, how collaborating with all these different artists and stuff, you've really got a pretty large roster under your belt of who you've collaborated with and who you've worked with now in the industry. Are there any artists that you'd like to collaborate with in the future? For sure. For sure. You know, love to collaborate with, you know, Damian Marley, you know what I'm saying? Julian Marley. That'd be tight, you know? Link up, link up, Julian. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to see that. Yeah. So your work, it's 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 real big because you do keyboards and you sing. How do you do these two roles? And you know, how do you feel that they complement your solo project? That's a great question. You know, sometimes I will say, as a keyboard player and as a singer, sometimes it is nice when I have one of my other talented keyboard player friends come sit in and play the keyboard, you know, so I can free up because I really, as a singer, I really like to interact with the crowd and I like to run and jump around and, and bring the energy. So, you know, that's definitely something I had to really adapt to, you know, the, you know, not necessarily having another keyboard player who's available at the time, you know, because there's a lot of different moving parts and schedules and Sometimes to just move light as a contained four piece, you know, has some nice benefits and some pros to it, you know? Um, but it's definitely, uh, it's helping me become a sharper musician and, you know, being able to separate those two parts and do them efficiently. It, it helps me understand the deeper layers of the music and why the simplicity, just the, the bubble in the, the piano chain is like that relationship it's just it's one of those things where you know it doesn't need to it, it doesn't need to be complicated at all so trying to get into that that almost like hypnotic groove and rhythm to where it becomes like second nature and just like muscle memory then i can focus on singing you know so and then but i try to do it at the same time you know so it's been a journey and uh i love it i love music the process of becoming you know so it's, it's about the the journey and not the destination. The journey is the destination. Definitely. Real yes. talk. And you mentioned you have a really big musical background that even reggae wasn't even the first thing that you were introduced to and stuff, you know, in your upbringing. How do you see your music with reggae resonating with other listeners that aren't even big reggae fans? Yeah. Yeah, because I just try to, you know, I just put the love and the heart and my soul into the music, you know, and it'll resonate with those who it's meant to resonate with, you know. I really, I really love reggae music, you know, but I love all music, you know, so if there's just, it just depends on the, the place and the time, but, you know, reggae is the foundation, you know, the foundation of the world, you know, yeah. the Naya Bingi, the one, two, real talk, your heartbeat, you know, big up reggae music, and Rastafari. Many artists draw inspiration from personal experiences. Can you share any particular life moments that help deeply influence your music or even your journey into this genre right now? Yeah. 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 You know, there's been so many times where I, um, 
I'll listen to some music and the music will be some of like some of my favorite songs ever, you know? And then mystically like a month or a year, however long will go by and then I'll be in a musical situation where we're now, you know, performing these, these same songs with these artists live, you know, and learning the keyboard lines and, you know, really just resonating to the music like that, you know, and just being able to learn from some of my favorite singers and, you know, there's been a lot of different situations, but it's a, it's an honor for sure, you know? Mm. The solo projects often offer the artists a platform to express their individuality away from the groups that they've been able to perform with. What aspects of your music identity are you most excited to explore through your solo work? Mm, can you ask the question one more time? Not a problem. <laughs> Solo projects often offer artists a platform to express their individuality. What aspects of your music identity are you most excited to explore through your solar work? Yeah, you know, just the, the spirit of collaboration and unity and collective security, you know, and, and, and working within the community, you know, with the solo projects. I don't even view it more as a solo project because my drummer sings, the, the bass player sings, the guitar player sings. These are all incredible musicians and singers in their own right. So I view, you know, I'm just really trying to bring forward this uh, the collective energy, you know, and um, just, you know, trying to lend a strength, you know, to the, to the ones that have already been playing this music for a long time and, you know, and trying to inspire the future generations. You know, to me, that's, that's what it's all about, you know, so. Right. Um, you know, I think that if anyone has a song in their heart and they have a voice, you know, it's like, you know, sing your song, you know, don't stop praising the most high. Really. Definitely. And live performances have a special energy. How do you approach engaging your audience and creating memorable experiences during your shows? I've seen you perform live a few times and there's different times where I see you just vibe. You just completely, it seems like you just freestyle it almost. Yeah, you know, I would say the answer to that question would be is I just like to have fun, you know, I have a saying and it goes like this. If you're not having fun, then you're done, you know, so I just like to have fun. I like to dance, I like to dance a lot. You know, it can be kind of tough when you're behind the keyboard. So you, you have to get creative. You got to jump around, you know, yeah. you got to do a little a couple of spins and some, <laughs> some moves. Yeah. But I'm um, definitely you know, just freeing up and having a good time, you know in the spirit of unity and thanksgiving show show in an ever evolving music industry what are some of the strategies that you found effective to staying connected to your fan base and reaching brand new listeners well that's a great question because you know i haven't even necessarily released my first single yet so it's kind of hard to gauge the the listenership but i would say to the ones who resonate to my music, whether it's the music that I write and perform with my band or associated acts and artists that we do works with. Um, yeah, you know, through social medias, you know, I like to, uh, I'll go out there and put the posters up around the town, you know, and hand out the handbills to the, to the people. And, you know, definitely um, just trying to keep the momentum and the energy up. Sure. You definitely do that, considering you're the person to prompt me to come here. Ah. So, without you, Music Coast wouldn't even have entertained it, well, really. So you really are proactive in this community. Well, big up Music Coast every big time, you know. We've been uh, talking about getting in this interview for a minute. Keep on passing by each other, but tonight, right now, you know, we played four shows today. My legs are a little tired, but we're here, you know? The Oregon Reggae Festival, it was great. The, the skies opened up and it poured rain for about 25 minutes, mystically out of nowhere. It was amazing. A raindrop hit my hand on the keyboards and I was like, what? I looked up, there's a cloud up there. And then like two, three minutes later, it was just pouring. And it was uh, thankfully big up the staff and the ones of the Oregon Reggae Festival. I know they acted promptly covered the gear and got the show rolling at the other venue, you know, so the show great. must go on. 
Definitely. Big up Music Coast. Big up you, brother. And looking forward, what can we expect from you in your solo project or even projects with new collaborations? Is there anything you want to plug? Yeah, I'm a uh, part of a, a compilation rhythm album that's going to be released here soon. You know, so check for my single on there called Ja Love Divine. It's going to be my first official single. And then I also have a handful of other works. I'm working on an album right now. And I also have another project in the works. And as along with my own music, I'm also getting ready to launch the record label, Light Code Records, you know? So we have a couple albums in the work with some awesome artists on that as well. And just, you know, taking the time to produce and learn and give thanks. And, you know, definitely I feel so grateful for all the phases and cycles that life's journey has brought me through so far up till now. And uh, I definitely believe that it's just gonna be more fun, you know, it's gonna get better and better, you know, life is what we make it, you know, so as we age and grow old, like, like a fine wine, you know, so does our intellect and our wisdom and the love in our heart, you know, so I'm just ready, ready to, ready for the future with open arms, you know, but grounded in the present, you know. Definitely. What, what, has, what has happened up till now is a gift, you know? Yes, I. It's beautiful, man. Well, thank you so much for sitting with, standing with me and reasoning yeah. with me, brother. It's long overdue, and I'm so excited that we were able to knock this out and look towards the future together, brother. Yes, I. Yo, thank, thank you, you so, so much. Man. Music Coast, you already know. Ooh. Love it.